a combat medic finds himself tying tourniquets on his own legs on a bloody battlefield. I was telling myself, you don't want to die here. You do not want to die here. His high school sweetheart gets a fearful call in the night. I think deep down I just had a feeling that um, something bad was going to happen. But I mean, I knew I knew that we were going to make it through it, and you know, I knew I was sticking around. And... How can they get back the lives they left so far behind in this small Minnesota town? On this edition of Operation Build, I'm Coming Home, we're going to show you how caring organizations and people came together to create a dream come true. This is the story of Thomas Scott. I'm Alexi Panos. I love working as a model and TV host, but when I'm not here on set, I live a completely different life. We are turning extreme situations into extraordinary results. Our mission is to innovate, renovate, and elevate the lives of people in need. This is Operation Build. In the war zones of Iraq and Afghanistan, Thomas Scott's job was combat medic, rushing to wounded comrades time and again, providing urgent, life-saving care. Then one day, in a brutal, heart-stopping flash, he was the man calling for help. Thomas Scott grew up in sleepy Burnsville, Minnesota, he and his longtime girlfriend, Brittany, met each other here and went to high school together. Thomas joined the military because he wanted to see the world and also to study medicine. After basic training, he was quickly deployed to Iraq and then Afghanistan as corpsman. Then came that fateful day his patrol unit was rolling back towards friendly lines. They were continually on nerve-wracking lookout for improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, buried along the trails. And as we're rolling in, I just heard this, heard and felt this big blast that lifted my vehicle up. It was just kind of like a, just dust and cloud and everything. And I was just like, oh my god, I think we may have just gotten blown up really bad. I had to tend to myself. I'm like, if you think too long about it, it could be too late. So I just snapped into it and like put tourniquets on both of my legs. Um, and I was just like trying to do as much as I could to preserve my own life. That was basically that moment. And then I remember um, laying there in like one of the worst pains I've ever experienced in my life before, just not telling myself, you don't want to die here. You do not want to die here. As it turned out, both of his legs were severely damaged and one had to be amputated below the knee. I used to really, it used to really make me tear up and like really depressed every time I went and saw my orth like orthopedic surgeon because he just told me like, well, you don't have that many options here, Thomas. You just ha you could either um, stick with the leg that you already have that's been you know um, that's been put back together, been salvaged, or you could um, get it amputated, which will relieve a lot of pain for you. You won't have to ever think about it again. The first time he spoke to his then girlfriend, Brittany. He told her she didn't have to stay with him. I, I just said I was, you know, I, they think gone, they, can, yeah, yeah, my foot's gone on my right side. Um, they don't know what they could do with my left, with my left leg or so. Um, it's gonna, be, I, I think this is gonna be a really tough journey, and you know what I mean. Please let me know if this is, you know, gonna be too much for you. Like I don't expect you to go through this with me. This is my decision. And she was, she just burst it out in, t in tears and like, who do you take me for? And <laughs> like, she's like, I'll be there for you. I was yeah. glad he was alive, you know? Mm -hmm. you know. I was in college, so I was still trying to figure out, you know, how I was gonna go to my classes and I was gonna go see him and you know how to balance everything, but I knew I knew he was worth it and you know he'd do the same thing for me if he could and they were married shortly after in a VA hospital chapel. Rehabilitation was a difficult and frustrating ordeal. It seemed to take forever for Thomas's leg to heal enough so that he could wear a brace and walk normally. Soon after the injury, Thomas applied to get a new house for him and his new wife. 
I, I found out about Homes for Our Troops through one of my Marines, uh, a Marine that, he was my team leader, that um, ended up getting hurt in Iraq, and I ended up working on, or helping to save his life then. Mm -hmm. um, he was the one that was like, hey doc, when I got to the hospital in uh, Maryland, he was like, hey doc, you ought to check out Homes for Our Troops. And I know that that's really far down the road in your recovery, but you should start thinking about them because they're doing awesome things for vets. He's like, they just built me a house the other day. Well, Thomas applied to us in August of 2012, and lo and behold, right here in Lonsdale, Minnesota, a home opened up for Thomas, and uh, we were really thrilled about that. Wow, so how many homes to date have you guys given away? Year to date, we have built 167 specially adapted homes, and in addition to that, we've also given away 24 homes through our Home Award Program, which is the program that we um, did in conjunction with national banks. That is fantastic. And I know personally, just from vets in my own life, PTSD and, and coming back into the civilian world, it's a huge transition. So this must be a big stress relief as well. It is indeed. And um, many times when severely injured veterans leave places like Walter Reed um, in Bethesda, they have a facility that is handicap accessible. Mm -hmm. So when they leave, it's culture shock. They go back to their traditional home and the thresholds are there and the doors aren't, you know, the door ways aren't wide enough and their kitchen counters aren't at the right height and they can't reach for shelves and it's um, it's frustrating and it's um, it affects their self-esteem so our homes take away that and provide that give them back that freedom and independence that they lost due to their injury a year later Brittany and Thomas look forward to coming back to Minnesota and starting a new life together both attend the University of Colorado pursuing psychology degrees Thomas plans to go on to graduate school and establish a specialty working with traumatized combat veterans. We share stories a lot, mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll be able to relate to them, they'll be able to relate to me, and they could probably, I could, you know, they, we could probably just talk through things. Meanwhile, Thomas and Britt's families feel so blessed to have the two of them home safe and sound. It's a big relief to so see him, you know, happy, he and Brittany happy, you know, to reach this far. And um, mm. I mean, life is just, you know, good for all of us. That's all I can say. Uh, to see Tama come this far, you know, what he's been through. And, you know, I wouldn't even think about if it happened to me, if I could go come this far as he, have, as he has done. So I'm very grateful, you know, I'm very thankful that he has come this far in his life. What do you guys think about them getting this amazing house? Awesome. Yeah? yeah have you all seen it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's unreal. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that don't happen. It's where unbelievable. My, it's where my grandkids are going to grow up. Because <laughs> exactly. I'm patiently waiting. <laughs> and what a homecoming it's going to be. A few miles away, in the tiny community of Lonsdale, a brand new home awaits them. We're going to fill it up with beautiful things, as you'll see coming up. Since 9-11, more than 1,700 veterans have returned home with life-altering injuries. Lonsdale, Minnesota makes Burnsville look like the big city. But this cozy bedroom community will be the future home of our deserving veteran Thomas Scott and his new wife. They've already seen this lovely house given to them free and clear by the nonprofit organization Homes for Our Troops. Thomas and Brittany's new home is beautiful, but so far, empty. We're about to change that soon enough. And when they move in in a few weeks, they're going to have a lot of valuables to protect. So one improvement we've got in mind is a Schlage keyless lock system. Anne Mathias is here to explain how it works. And I am so, so, so excited about this. When I heard that we were installing these, this is one of those items where, mental note, I'm putting these in my house. <laughs> so tell me about what we're installing for Thomas and his wife. Yes, so we are installing the Schlage Touch System, which allows you keyless access into your home, so it holds up to 19 codes. You can have a different code for everyone in the family. Wow. It's battery operated, so you don't need to 
do any um, additional drilling or, or hook up wires and there's a low battery indicator that tells you when so um, it's time to change the battery. <laughs> there's also no cylinder in this lock, so there's no keys to bump or pick, and so it's a huge security advantage when you install one of these locks. That's great. So the one that we're installing for them is this one here, correct? Right, so that's the deadbolt, and we'll put a decorative lever underneath, okay. and then we also offer a lever by itself that has a code. So if you want to put that in a room that you want to keep the kids out of, sure. or um, a wine cellar, or um, even an office building. Yeah. Put it in that as well. And then tell me about these two models as well. Yes, yeah, so this is the Schlage Connect, which you can connect with your cell phone. If you have a home automation system, you can get alerts when people come and go. You can lock or unlock your door from anywhere. Wow. So it's a great access control yeah. for um, people who have a lot of guests coming and going or they need to let house sitters in or pet sitters and things like that. Yeah, and I, you know, I must imagine that someone who's disabled, if they're upstairs or they have a hard time getting around, they might be a little bit older, this could be a great way to let people in and out as well. It is, and it also has an added uh, addition of security to it where there's an alarm built in the back of the door lock. Mm -hmm. So if someone tries to tamper with the door, the alarm goes off. And so you yeah. can um, hear the alarm and hopefully scare the intruders away. It also lights up, so at night it's great for you to be able to find your lock? Yes, that's one thing. Even when, with my deadbolt, it's hard to find the, the key sometimes. I can't even get in there, so that's great. Right. That is so cool. So easy to install, I heard you say that. Yes. So are we gonna do this? We are, it's so <laughs> easy. Awesome, all right, let's get that started and I can't wait to try this out. Great, awesome. thanks. This touch system is super easy to install with just a screwdriver. I'm going to take a crack at this working with Anne. Well, that was easy. Now I'm looking forward to showing Thomas how this high-tech touch lock system works and seeing Brittany's reaction to these stylish satin nickel finished door handles. Looks like a couple of guys have shown up to take measurements of every room here with a designer's eye. What they've got in mind to make this empty house a home when we come back. The first locking keys were made of wood some 4,000 years ago in ancient Egypt. Thomas and Britt are staying with his parents a few miles away in Burnsville this week. Meanwhile, we're making some improvements in their new home. The first thing we did was make sure the home is safe and sound with new Schlage keyless locks. But soon, these empty, echoey rooms will be filled with beautiful furnishings. Hey there. How are you doing? So good, I cannot wait to see what's in this truck. <laughs> I'll just let these beefy men do their work while I have a talk with Chris Barber of BFW Charities. They're providing the Scots a house full of beautiful furniture. When we heard the Scott story, uh, it, was, it was touching and it, 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 it just all came together. I mean, that's exactly what we do. So um, the ability for us to to provide something, what we would take for granted, something simple, like a dining room table or chairs, so they can come home to their home and they can sit down and relax and be together as a family. And that's huge with veterans. I mean, they face so many different challenges. BFW Charities was founded in 1993 by Doug and Julie Hughesby, owners of Becker Furniture World in Minneapolis. BFW Charities started with requests from individuals who knew of families without kitchen tables, where children were sleeping on the floor, and many of them were vets. The program you see in action here is their furniture achievements. Through this program, they've furnished homes for veterans and other people in need. Soon, Doug saw that more needs could be met through medical research and direct care medical grants and research, people need to know that there's other options. You can't tell somebody you're going to be in a wheelchair and never walk again. We don't want to hear that. 
So there's research, there's best practices. People need to know their options, and that's what we try to do. While thousands of veterans wait months for treatment and pain management, this program goes directly to the source. Veterans who may not be able to access advanced technologies and care are given options for complementary medicine and therapies. Each year, BFW Charities impacts the lives of hundreds of people, and they hope to do much more as they grow. The more you have, the more you should help people. And we, we see so many needs, so it's not just one program or one thing. There's like hundreds of things that need help. We are so thankful to the Hughesby family and BFW Charities for helping fill the Scott home with beautiful furnishings. We know they're going to appreciate everything BFW Charities has done for veterans. And we've got even more surprises for the Scots. Look what's happening out in the kitchen. I'm thinking Britt is going to flip over this gorgeous Lennox dinnerware. I'm here with Beth Bear from Lennox, and Beth, I'm so excited about this because the Scots have only seen their gorgeous new home completely empty. So now we've filled it with furniture, now we're really making it a home by giving them this amazing dinnerware for them to entertain their family. We're so excited to set this gorgeous table with our Lennox Entertain 365 collection. It's a complete assortment of dinnerware that's really designed for all your entertaining needs. So, and it's designed for the way that we live today. So there are three contemporary carved patterns in great shapes and great textures that take you anywhere from an intimate breakfast for two to a buffet or a brunch, cocktails and hors d'oeuvres with your friends or a grand gala evening like we've set here today. It's easy, it's elegant, and it, it sets a beautiful table for many beautiful memories. Absolutely. Now, Thomas has been through so much as a vet, and Britt has been by his side the entire time, so they're really an incredible couple. How does it feel for you to be able to support them in their journey? We are so proud to be part of a project that supports heroes like Thomas. And now, it's even more important, as he comes home, to be able to have time with friends and family. And if we can, in providing this beautiful dinnerware to them, help them make some new beautiful memories in their journey going forward, then we've done our job and we can only hope the best for them. Well, you have already succeeded because they have a huge extended family right here in the area. So I think this is the new place for all holidays and celebrations. Fantastic, <laughs> can't wait for them to see. Well, when we come back, the Scots are coming home. Dinner plates originated with a Chinese discovery of porcelain in approximately 600 AD. It's always an exciting time when we can show a family the transformation from empty house to warm, inviting home. It's especially gratifying when that family includes Thomas Scott, a medical corpsman who served in Iraq and Afghanistan and during the loss of a leg and other injuries in service to our country. It's been such a great week here in Minnesota, meeting this wonderful family and working with such generous companies who helped to provide the Scots with a new outlook on life after all they've been through. <laughs> We'd like to thank Homes for Our Troops, a group which continues to give homes to hundreds of deserving veterans. BFW Charities, which offers a wide range of services for veterans, including home furnishings and medical care. Schlage Lock Company for a practical and stylish keyless touch lock system. And to Lennox for that beautiful 365 entertainment dinnerware. Well, I think you'll agree this was an incredible mission accomplished. Guys, we wish you the best of luck in your brand new home. Thank, Thank you. you. Until next time, I'm Alexi Panos. Yeah.